Welcome to the Vibrant Performance Great Retro Header Build-Off. If you watched our teaser video, you'll know we're here at Vibrant's R&D Center. To my right is Art's BMW 2002, and his, uh, his partner in crime here, Aaron, is one of the Vibrant fabricators, is gonna be building a header for Art's car. And in a sort of a vintage theme that we've got happening here, we've got Connie Salika, obviously. This is California Jay from Vibrant, and he's going to be building a header for my beams, or beamsy as I like to call them. So Jay, we've been peeking over on this side of the engine bay, just trying to figure out what space constraints yeah. we have. You've already removed some water necks from my engine. Yeah, we got rid of some components. We want to free up some space. Uh, you know, if the components are on the engine and we don't need them, then you know it's it's a good thing to remove them, save a little bit of weight, and we can maybe re-engineer some stuff to make it better suited for the engine bay. Yeah. Uh, so from here, um, you know, I'm going to cut back maybe a few more water lines, and then I'm going to get into putting a, a flange on there, start doing some scanning then get into the, the uh, design process, right? and then we'll move into uh, you know really mocking this thing up. So scanning, what do you mean? Are we gonna get like a laser scanner out here? Well, at Vibrant, we have a Arctec AVA scanner, and what that allows us to do is uh, take all the information uh, that's in front of us as like uh, shapes and surfaces and translate them into the computer so I can pick them up in, in SolidWorks and then start designing a header from scratch. Okay. Uh, this allows me to uh, you know, build a jig for reproduction. It allows me to make sure that everything's uh, accurately placed if we you know, damage something and we have to replace or fix it. Uh, and if I'm not around and somebody else needs to build a replacement header, I can give the file to uh, you know, another fabricator and he can work with it also. And it also allows us to you know, accurately gauge what runner links are or how things are going to be placed without me having to waste materials. And you don't have to be bent over the engine bay, you can do it all over on the table. Exactly. We have a jig table that we can translate the design of the header onto uh, with a jig, tells us where everything goes, and it saves me from, you know, cutting a pipe, seeing if it fits, then going back to the table, then going to the, 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 the weld bench. Uh, so it saves me a bunch of time in, uh, you know, getting under the car or, or you know, saving a lot of time in test fitting. Right, okay, so step one is to start scanning this thing? Yeah, we're gonna uh, get it all hooked up. I'll bring the laptop over here, we'll get the scanner going, and you can see how it all works. Sweet, let's do it. So as you can see, Jay is using his scanner here to emit a lot of light. Is it, is it using lasers? What is happening here, Jay? Well, this, this scanner is called a white light scanner. It's an Arctec AVA scanner. And what we're doing is we're sending a common, or we're gathering a combination of uh, surface dot cloud information along with some pictures to help us figure out where everything's sitting in the car. Yeah. And once I get enough scans, I can piece them together in the computer, make a single file out of it, what we call an STL file eventually. Okay. After it's all knit, knitted together, as yeah. we call it. Yeah. And it's going to um, uh, let me build a surface in SOLIDWORKS to pick up uh, geometry uh, in order to, you know, place the flange, uh, figure out where the runner's got to go, where this, uh, you know, the steering shaft is and things yeah. like that. And it allows me to accurately place a large amount of information uh, in the computer to know where everything is without having to come back and forth to the car. So it's a three-dimensional scan that's like to scale, so yeah. you know the size of the spaces. Exactly, it's replicating what we see here to down to the micron yeah. um, to let you know where all the information sits. And so it, we say information, I mean like parts, flanges, surfaces, nuts, bolts, everything like that. Yeah, it's amazing. It even picks up like texture in the, in the valve cover. It's it, incredible. It does. Now, some people might say, well, why didn't you CM, CMM this? Well, we could do that, um, but the amount of information gathered is, uh, it's a bit of a different process, mm -hmm. and for the amount of information that I need to gather to reference, yeah. this is a lot faster. Okay. Um, so it's very accurate, gathers a lot of information at once, allows me to put it together, get it on SOLIDWORKS, and then we can start executing and designing a header uh, pretty quickly. So Jay's done scanning Connie over there, figuring out how he's going to attack the design on the computer. And over here, we've got Art and his BMW 2002. You can check out the header build that Aaron's going to do on their channel. Art, uh, this is obviously the original header. This is the one we pulled out. We have to cut it out. 
not exactly a uh, work of uh, design genius. It also weighs about 40 pounds. So this is going in the scrap heap and Aaron looks yes. like he's got some shiny bits here. Aaron, what is your a plan of attack? Yeah, uh, we're gonna go with a 4-2-1 design. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna start with some vibrant performance collectors and some tubing. And since this is a retro header build off, I'm gonna do this build a little old school. I'm not gonna use the technology. I'm just gonna try and use my skill to, to build a header that's gonna work well for this car. And you've got a lot less space to work with too. That's a tight engine bay. The engine is leaned over a little bit. Yeah, it is tight, but I don't have a steering rod in the way. Oh, that's I have true. To work around that's like, true. like Jay does. Yeah, so. you do have a nice opening down there, don't you? I do, yeah. It's and nice this and engine is the factory engine. You haven't done an engine swap like I have. Factory engine that came with the car. It's a two liter, uh, makes about 100 horsepower to the crank. Right, so you're not going for, it's not a race car build. This is going to be a nice street car? Yeah, a street car. Mild restoration, a little bit of modification, suspension, right. lower, you know, wheels, nice stuff. Okay, and from your perspective, what do you want from Aaron as far as the tubular <laughs> artwork that's going to go in this hole? I want it to look pretty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm all about aesthetics and design. Uh, there's some inspiration that I've been trying to push Aaron towards. There's a Group 5 header that looks really cool. So in the 70s, they used to race these cars. Okay. Um, they were very popular, very fast, and... Uh, I don't know if I can tell you, give give much away here, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a header that basically it's really long and swoopy, okay. so that's what we're kind of going for. And we're actually doing the full exhaust on this car as well. So uh, you hear that, Jay? We're doing full exhaust on Connie now too. It's it's been decided. <laughs> Sorry, Vibrant Performance, you're now on board for an exhaust on the Sleka too. So that's a wrap <laughs> on episode one of our great retro he header build off with Vibrant Performance. It's time for you guys to jump over to the Vibrant Performance channel and see how Aaron plans to do it on the 2002. And as long as the screen doesn't turn red, yeah. that means that I've got a decent scan going and I'm acquiring some good information. Gotcha.